This video focuses on the set cover problem and we are going to apply it to a coffee shop opening example at RPI campus. But before going through that example, I want to describe the set cover problem. So what we have is a set of n elements represented by u and a set of m subset of set u represented by set s and our goal is to choose the minimum number of these subsets such that all elements in U are covered. So this is the definition of the problem. And now I'm going to describe our coffee shop problem. So we have the RPI campus map here. A part of it is here in figure one. And we picked some of these buildings as a potential location for the coffee shop problem. So these are the buildings that we picked that are in figure two. And to formally define, we have some connections in between the buildings. So how we determine them is we connect two buildings, building I and J. If a student in building I can walk to building J and go back to building I within a threshold time interval. In this example, we said that let threshold be two minutes. So we want to find the minimum number of these coffee shops to be opened such that all students can get their coffee without being late for their classes. And this two minute idea is represented in this map. So Ricketts to Troy takes 30 seconds to one minute to walk and come back. So it is less than two minutes of our threshold. And that means Ricketts is connected to Troy. And similar idea, I can go from Troy to Ricketts in two minutes and come back. That means Troy is connected to Ricketts. So there's a two-way connection. For Sage and Troy, I can go from Troy to Sage and come back to Troy in two minutes. So it is connected. Sage to Troy, I can go and come back in two minutes. So Sage is connected to Troy as well. Two-way connections. So we have these connections set for all the buildings in my map. Now I am going to go and show my map in here and define my subsets and the elements in them. So for the first building right here, I have, I'm going to use a highlighter. So I have Ricketts building. I'm going to see which buildings are connected to Ricketts. So Troy is connected. There's a connection here. It is connected to Sage here and also it is connected to itself because if i open a coffee shop in ricketts a student in ricketts building can get the coffee in the same building without going somewhere else that means opening a coffee shop in one can cover building one and two and three because of the connections so one two three four subset one for ricketts building subset two connected to one three, four, and itself. So one, two, three, four. Subset three, I have connection to two, one, four, and itself. Similarly, one, two, three, four. For building four, I have a connection to three, two, and itself. Two, three, four. To save time, I listed the rest of them here. And I'm going to cut and paste and our subsets and the elements in them are listed here. Now I'm ready to present my data and formulate my coffee shop problem. So we have 13 subsets that are listed right here and they're indexed on i, one to 13. And my decision variable is xi. For a general set cover problem, we define the decision variable as xi is 1 if subset i is selected and 0 otherwise i from 1 to 13. But for this particular example, we can equivalently say xi is 1 if a coffee shop is opened in building i and 0 otherwise i from 1 to 13. These are actually the same thing. Just this is more general, this definition, this is specific to this application. We have a parameter. AIJ, one if coffee shop opened in building I can cover building J and zero otherwise. What this means is when I open a coffee shop, say in one, what happens to A11? A11 is one because opening a coffee shop in one covers the students in building one. A12 is also one because A1 is connected to two 
building one is connected to two and students in Troy building can go to building one and can get their coffee. So A12 is one. An interesting point, A21 is also one. So A12 is one, A21 is also one. What it, what, what it, why it happened is we have this two-way connection. So I open a coffee shop in Troy building. That means the students in Tro Ricketts building can go to Troy building and get their coffee and come back. Then that means A21 is one as well. So two-way connections means there's a symmetry A12 equals A21 equals one. Same for three, four, A34 is one, A43 is one because of this two-way connection. This is the same for all of these two-way connections here. A57 is equal to one, A75 is equal to one as well. So this is our perimeter. The constraints I have are every building must be served or covered by at least one coffee shop. It's like that was the idea. We are going to open coffee shops so that the students in each of these buildings can go get their coffee without being late for their classes. Now I'm ready to formulate my model. We want to open the minimum number of coffee shops. X1, X2, X3, X13. This is my objective. My constraints. So for each building, I have a constraint. If I write my constraint for Ricketts building, I'm going to go to my list of subsets and elements in them and look for building one. So Ricketts is building one and one appears in set one, set two, set three. Therefore, my constraint is x1 plus x2 plus x3 greater than or equal to one. This is for Ricketts. For Troy building, two appears in set one, set two, set three, and set four. My constraint for Troy building is x2, x1, x2, x4, greater than or equal to one for Troy building. For Sage building, it appears in subset one, subset two, subset three, subset four. Therefore, x1, x2, x3, x4, greater than or equal to one, Sage. For Walker, it appears in two, three, and four. My constraint is x2, x3, x4, greater than one, Walker. I have the rest listed here. And to save time, I'm gonna cut and paste and delete the Walker constraint. I already listed it. So this is the formulation of my coffee shop example. My objective, my constraints for each building and my decision variable. This is important. Xi is binary, so I have to indicate that xi is binary for all i variables, all i values. So each time when you formulate a model, you have to specify what kind of decision variables you have. In this case, we have a decision variable, which is binary, and I listed it right there. If you look at my subsets and the covers, there's an interesting property here. So when we wrote the constraints, we looked at the subsets for each building and if that building is included in that subset, then that variable had a coefficient of one in my constraint. But if we look at the subset one, we see that x1, sorry, one, two, three have, are in my subset one. And those variables here have a coefficient of one in my left hand side. For subset two, one to four appear in subset two and they have a coefficient of one. Same for three, same for four, and so on. All of these subsets have this property and there's a correspondence between them. But why this happened is the symmetry between the connections. So we have these two way connections. When I said, when I talked about AIJ parameter, I said A12 is one, A21 is one as well. So that means there's a symmetry here. That is why we had this interesting structure here. But it may not always be the case. Like we might have something A12 equals one, but A21 not equal one. There might be cases like that. So we may not always go ahead and write down my constraint by looking at the subset. So we always have to go through the subsets and look for the 
item or element that we are interested in, find it in the subset and get a coefficient of one. So by following the method that I demonstrated here, we are always safe. So, but this symmetry happened because of these two-way connections. Just to point out, that was an interesting structure here. And now I'm going to move on. Next thing is the general formulation of the set cover problem. So what we have here is minimize the sum of xi's over i. Subject to aij times xi summation is over j greater than or equal to 1 for all i values. And my decision variables are binary for all i values. Another variant is weighted set cover. The only difference is the objective is going to be ci times xi, which means ci is the cost of opening a coffee shop in building I, say we have different values instead of one for each building, then in that case, we have to have CI times XI. That's the only difference, the rest is the same, and this is the formal and summation notation formulation. And finally, we have the optimal solution. I implemented this on Excel solver, and this is the solution I get. Two, six, seven, eleven are one, and the rest is zero. My objective is four. I opened four coffee shops. And now let's verify that our constraints are satisfied. Two, six, seven, eleven are one. What happens is one to four are covered here. Five to nine are covered in these two sets, and ten to thirteen are covered in the set. So all of the buildings are covered by opening these four coffee shops. So our constraints are satisfied. One nice thing that I want to show is that the cardinality of my subsets. The maximum cardinality in these subsets is four. So the first subset has a cardinality of three, second is four, three has four, four is three, and so on. The maximum cardinality is four. So consider this example. Say we have a subset S1 that has 1, 2, 3, 4 in it. Say we have S2, 5, 6, 7, 8 in it. S3, 9, 10, 11, 12 in it. And what happened here is we covered from 1 to 12. But we still need one more set because 13 is not covered. In this case, what I did here, I put a different element in each subset, so there's no duplication, but still I need one more. And I can also verify this by saying maximum cardinality is 4, and I have 13 buildings. 13 divided by 4 is a number between 3 and 4. If we round it up or take the ceiling function, that value is 4. That means I need at least 4 buildings to cover all of my 13 buildings. So S4 is 13. So this is just an example to demonstrate that we need at least four buildings to cover all of these buildings. So this proves that the lower bound to our problem is four. And by, the, by finding a solution with the objective value of four, we verify that this solution is optimal.